first time in my life I had the Holy Spirit speak to me. Akana mbe bilo mifanya sio vizuri. And for me ilikuwa inaitwa kwa epiphany where you like God is real. Wow. God isn't some guy in heaven. He's real and he's there. He's here with me. That is what changed my life. Hello, good morning, evening, afternoon, whenever you're watching us from. This is The Conqueror's Show on Wema TV. I'm your host, Lauren Lepore, and before we begin, I'd just like to thank you viewers for always supporting us in the work that we do here at Wema TV and on The Conqueror's Show, where we bring you real people who have conquered their life situations regardless of the circumstances. With me in studio is another conqueror today. He's an architect. He is a studio owner and he is also a producer. Without further ado, let me welcome Cactus Kusini. Karibu sana. Thank you very much. Thank you. Karibu to the conquerors. Asante sana. We are so honored to have you here. Yeah. And, uh, you know, speaking with you, your story is one that so many can relate to because we've all had those ups and downs before we met or we had an encounter with Christ Jesus. So, bef to kick us off, um, where does your story begin? Where can you say that you've had it down or you, you've had it up? or Where does your story begin? Uh, it has no uh, real, uh, that I can say, a formal start. Okay. That we say that now you've started. But mm. uh, it's, you know, like the story of life when you start discovering yourself and your situations around you start talking to you, mm -hmm. then you realize that I'm actually alive and I have a purpose. Mm. And uh, basically, my greatest um, journey was that journey to find that purpose. Because you can find, for example, I was doing so many things mm. without understanding why I do them. I don't know why I'm alive. And that was one of the struggles that got me into being the person that I, that I am today. Okay. Yeah. Wow, there's many things. Yeah. When did you start doing them? Uh, actually, for me, I was, uh, I was always talented since before I, I can remember. Really? Yeah, I used to draw. I used to, like maybe when I was in nursery school, I'd, I'd be the one who draws the real cat. It looks like a real cat. <laughs> wow. I was that, I was that kid. Mm -hmm. And then I was, as I was growing up, I had a lot of, were well, many guys, we do music and, and, and we draw and all that, mm -hmm. but I would always stand out and I didn't know why. So as I was uh, growing up, I think maybe it got to me. I, I thought that I'm, you know, like I'm special or entitled mm -hmm. to some kind of, but that's another, that's another <laughs> story. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about that later. Mm -hmm. But uh, as the years went by, I, I started liking music. Mm -hmm. And I remember I didn't like the subject of music. Mm -hmm. I actually hated music because we had a very strict teacher who used to give us some hard punishments and made music <laughs> so difficult. Mm -hmm. So I remember even when I was getting into high school, I was asked, do you want me to recommend you for a music class? I was like, no, I don't want anything to do with music oh, no. at all. You were traumatized. I was traumatized. Mm -hmm. But uh, I loved music. But the kind of music I loved was not the music uh, D major, A minor. Mm -hmm. I liked the, the music with the beats and, uh -huh. you know, and you shake, shake your head. That's what I liked. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I, I was a rapper. Actually, I started rapping in primary school. I was already rapping. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So when I got into high school, uh, that was the thing and the people who were rapping were much older guys but they were like hey this, this kid can rhyme this kid can rhyme mm -hmm. so i would i'll be i'd be on find myself on stage with with uh, older guys i'd be doing things throughout high school and uh, fortunately for me um i was i was born again i, I, I got i was born again in high school mm. but nile wakovu unajua una wakoka form one juya bullying alafu kimia form two na backslide na backslide alafu wakoka form four ya exams mm -hmm. that kind of salvation race no you're not serious you just but the music was serious mm -hmm. and we uh, we had a lot of support even i performed in a lot of churches around nairobi oh. and it was really good even at that time but when i got out of uh, of um, high school Things changed. Things changed in that um, suddenly now you 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 it's like you've come of age. Mm. You want to you want to do more, but you're kind of limited. Mm. And then also there was a lack of role models because the role models we could look up to. Uh, that time you know you're so proud and you're so good also at your act. I'm like I can rap better than these gospel rappers. Mm -hmm. So you look at who is the best, 
and definitely we're looking at America mm -hmm. and, and the culture of those days. So those were our role models. So you know you won't come, you, you're rapping along a guy who's rapping about smoking marijuana and shooting people. Mm -hmm. And then you, you're going to go to church and serve, it, 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 you, you find you're like, I, I, don't, I don't really like this. And so in time I found myself drifting away from church and, uh, and I got out. And by the time I'm getting out is when I'm getting into, into campus. Mm. When that's I dangerous. That, that, that's, I think, the story of many people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you that's get into true. campus, now it's freedom, freedom. Mm -hmm. But for me, I, I was those guys who, I don't know how to say, you know those guys who like, freedom ni mezoya, mi hata siwezi arebika na jua, na jijua. Mm -hmm. So we got into it and we, we continued doing music. We'd go for rap battles, those days used to be rap battles and, and so on. And we'd get, um, that's where the name Cactus comes from, okay. rap battles. It sounds like, a, like you're battling, you know, you can't mm -hmm. fight mm -hmm. with that name kind of thing <laughs> it's intimidating it's intimidating that's where that was the origin of that name mm. uh, a cactus and uh, so that's 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 how we, we we started out but now what would happen even though we were, we were a group i always had something in me like we can do more than what we are doing and uh, for example i had um this on on the side i had a friend we used to rap with mm -hmm. in the estate he taught me a lot he was better than me we were around age mates at that time and we were really young and we were just, we were really young, you know, we were like 19, 20 years mm -hmm. old. And you know, one day he goes to his folks, he's like, I don't want to do college, I want you guys, instead of paying school fees, mm -hmm. you give me that money, I'm with my partner, I want to start a studio. Okay. That time we were really young, that mm -hmm. time I've convinced him, like, you know, we just need a keyboard, you need a mic, you need, I've given him a list of it and down. Because that's all we used to do, from morning till evening at mm -hmm. Skype's college to go and rap. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's a story with a sad ending because this guy was uh, struggling with uh, depression and addiction mm. at that particular time. And um, he, his folks, he had a big fight with his folks. They're like, you know, you're wasting your life, you're this and that. Mm. And he was, his was really severe. So the guy went and attempted to commit suicide and he was successful. Oh no. The guy passed away. Mm. So, like, our dreams were shattered. For me, it was terrible because I couldn't even go for his, uh, what is it called, funeral. And I couldn't go because mm -hmm. I'm in trouble. I'm the one, I was his partner. Yeah. But for me, it had a significance in my life. I told myself that then, in, if that is the case, mm -hmm. then this dream is even more serious than, uh, than the, you know, that time we used to joke around. I was like, hey, it's serious. Mm -hmm. And I won't just throw all this away. So it's like, no, even in memory of him, we'll do something. And I went on, and I remember when I was in, um, how Audio Cusini was born. Mm -hmm. I was in your, your recording my studio. recording studio. Mm -hmm. It's called Audio Cusini. Mm -hmm. How it was born, I was in campus. And we've been doing, we've been performing from stage to stage. You've done all these things. I have all my, we are boys, we just keep kicking. I'm like, Apana, this can't work. Mm -hmm. So I used to have, um, me, I was lucky I had, what is it called? Help. Mm -hmm. Higher education loan. Loan, yeah. Mm -hmm. I had a loan. Mm -hmm. And the loan I got, me, I was lucky. My, my, my dad used to support me. I'd go and tell him, he, he used to support me with music. I'd tell him, me, nilipata pesa ya loan, nika buy mixer. Wow. It's like, so you, I'll be sorting you during the week with food and all that. Mm -hmm. So I was able to survive. And that is how the studio was born. I used the help loan. Wow. I buy a mixer, buy a mic, I buy this. In my studio, mm -hmm. I was known all six JQ what? <laughs> till, the, till morning, how to in a pigger, to how in a pigger. I was a producer and I produced a lot of artists, a lot, I, I can't even count. So that was your like part time job? It wasn't a job, I'm a student. Okay. That time I'm a student. So even when I'm producing, most of the times you're doing it for, for the love. That's what we used to wow. say, it's for mm -hmm. the love. Mm -hmm. But every once in a while someone will come and you, you charge him like 2K. <laughs> <laughs> then you go and drink it all. That's mm -hmm. how we used to live. And, uh, and as time went, we, we, I, I cleared and I, I came out of campus with a studio. It was a miracle actually. Wow. And uh, I, it was strange for me because whenever I look back at what I've been through, I always see the hand of God mm -hmm. in the midst of me not being um, not following God. Mm -hmm. I, I see his hand because mm -hmm. it was like a dream. I used to have a dream in campus that hey, one day I'll be coming from class, I go to my room and then I produce records. That's what I used to tell myself <laughs> in first year. Mm -hmm. Then I'm clearing, I'm in my final year, I'm like, wow, do you know I have a studio in my room? 
And guys come even from Inje to come to record in that studio. It was wow. serious. Mm. So I cleared, got out into the into the into the world, wildlife here in mm. I'm in a small bed sitter somewhere in Kahao and I need one car room. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's always full of guys, whether I'm there or not, they're just recording, 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 recording. <laughs> and I used to tell I used to like I remember thinking in my to myself, like, hey me, my house is always full. I don't even get private time. I wish I had like a studio mm. and then I have my own house candle. It didn't even take one year. I had a studio. Wow. Okay. As in God would come through in a funny way. Mm. That time you know I'm not praying. Mm. I'm drinking. Mm -hmm. I'm doing I'm doing it all. Mm -hmm. I found myself with a studio. I mean when Danny, I have I reached a point I was like, okay now um I want I want to become successful. I've been doing it for so many years, I want to become successful mm. and like go on the media and be seen. And it didn't even take long. In around a span of one year, I was, I don't know, countdown back at you, number one kwa countdown. My music was all over the place. Wow. I was all over the place. Maybe you may not remember me, but at that time I, I was really doing really well. But what was happening is um, God was trying to, to communicate something into my life. that These things are not impossible. Because I was coming from a point of, oh, you know, sisi to kwa third world. I wish I was born in America, mm. you know, that, that mentality. childish mentality. Yeah. And uh, so I saw these things are actually possible. Mm -hmm. And uh, right about when I was uh, getting into the media, that was around the time when now darkness was coming into my life, when God was, had reached that point, because I'd been 10 years, I'd never set foot on a, in a church for 10 years. And I think God ufika maali anasema apana, kijana, now it's my turn. <laughs> uh -huh. So it's like um, the story of Job. Mm -hmm. God just started pulling things out of my life. And the first crisis that happened is my dad passed away. And it was unfortunate, uh, an unfortunate incident because I was practicing with him. My dad was an architect mm -hmm. and I was working with him. Mm -hmm. we, were, we were partners. Mm -hmm. And we were doing well because I'd managed to add full around, but I'd recover. I'd full around, I recover. I full mm. around, I recover. So he understood you. He understood me, mm. and he was always there for me. And most importantly, and he understood the music. Mm. You know, he understood. Yeah. That, oh, this guy, this guy. Even if we are working here, this guy loves music. Yes. So that's what would happen. And uh, eventually, when now he's gone, you see now the 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 what is it called? The cabaret basket is gone mm. because I go there, I find. I was really, really young. I was very young. I've only practiced for like a year. Mm. And then the clients, they look at your experience. They look, yeah. what do you know? Mm. So if my dad had been there, he would have provided guidance. So now clients are like, hey, this guy, okay, he, he, he has talent because I'm, I'm talented. Mm. You know, I, I told you I'm an artist. Yeah. So the design is good, but there are so many things I don't know, technical things yeah. that would make a client like, hey, this guy. Okay, I think I'll go for a more experienced architect. True, yeah. And all the clients disappeared. And then I had a big fight with my dad's partner, and then now I got kicked out of that office, and then he took all the stuff. That mm. was step one. Mm. You know, like you have an office, you have computers and printers, and the guy just takes everything, walk away. That was step one. I was like, wow, okay, what's happening? There's more to that. As in there's more, of, that's step one. I mean, <laughs> that's step one. I would have thought that like your whole life was over after that. Not exactly, because now what I did, I told myself, okay, then if that's the case, then now I'll focus on music. Because mm -hmm. at that time, music was now beginning to succeed. I was like, now I'll go. We're going to make shows. How naive I was. You know, there's a system that you have to follow. You don't just go and make a show and people come to your show. There's yeah. a system. So I went, I failed also in the, in the music side. Mm -hmm. So now I had struggles that I couldn't even uh, pay my house, I couldn't pay for the studio, I, could, I had no cash flow, mm. nothing left, no no income. Yeah. I was nilibakiburi, was, zero. I was, I remember I was stranded in, in, in Mombasa. Mm. I can't even go to Nairobi. I had to call my mom, <laughs> like, you know, oh, no. oh mom, you are right. Uh, you know, that's now that's me being humbled by God. Mm. And uh, then I came back. Came back to Nairobi, my house has been equipped fully. Don't auction me. I've gone out to my mom's house. You went back to your mom's house? And I'm a big man. I went to my mom's house. She mm. was like, now you, I, I educated you. <laughs> I gave you everything. Mm. So you do, I don't owe you anything. Mm. The most I can do is because you're not an animal, mm. I won't leave you out in the cold. Mm. There's a store back there, end of a gear store. Oh no. hapo, utalala hapo. Mbako pate pesa ya kukile hizo wa reyaza rentu konazo. 
So that's why I, I, I checked in there and started struggling. Uh, that is the time when God was really appearing. How do I say? A lot of things were beginning to okay, not make sense. Things were not making sense. Mm -hmm. Because I was like, look, look me, Kwanzaa, I'm educated. Mm -hmm. I shouldn't be struggling like this. Yeah. Second, it's not like I don't have talent or skill that you can say I'm mediocre, that I deserve this. Mm -hmm. You know, that entitlement thing. Mm -hmm. Then third, you know, I've worked at justification <laughs> like this, but nothing, mm -hmm. nothing is working. So can you say that that was when you hit rock bottom? That was when I hit rock bottom. Mm -hmm. And uh, strangely enough, when I was going through all these things, there's one thing that stood out. And uh, I used to, you know, do you know, you know Matatu preachers? Do you know preachers who preach in yes, Matatu? Yes, yes. And many people view these guys as a nuisance. Mm. That these guys are causing one to bomb to Matatu. Mm. I used to be number one campaigner against. Matatu? No, no, no. Okay. I was number one campaigner against those guys. Okay. I didn't like them. Because mm. this guy, me, I'm going Bana to town. Mm. This guy is all in my space telling me about crisis coming back. Me, Bana, me, I'm busy. <laughs> you know, I was like, I had that attitude. Mm. And uh, so I didn't like those guys, and I remember one of them, Alini rebuke me by Asana, she was a lady, she was preaching as we were talking. Like, do you know, you know, and you know, and you know, strangely, Ujye Mungu wanakuanga msmart sana. Me, a matatu preacher, is who made me get saved. Wow. Specifically, matatu preacher. The people you, you didn't the like. The people I didn't like mm. at all. That is who God used to save, to put me into salvation. Wow. Because I remember it was a tough day. The day I, get, I got saved, I remember very well. I'd come from, all these things have gone haywire. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm telling, uh, I, I get a call. I'm told, you remember your dad's partner, the one who did all those bad things to you, yeah? Uh, there's, he's calling you for a meeting. There's a job which was left halfway, you have to go. Like that guy, I don't even want to see his face. And then my mom told me, you're a man. Mm. Yeah, you go there. Mm. So, you know now that is you're going there to nyenyekea to a guy who's done so, so, so much to you, you know, now you have to yeah. just shut up and, and listen because you, you have to survive. Mm. In the mat, this guy starts preaching. <laughs> he starts talking about my life. What? I can't even see him. I'm mm. going to life yangu. To detail. I was like, wow. Wow, this guy. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Does he know you? And it wasn't funny because I remember mm. I was, every word was like a sword cutting my... And you know eventually what he said? Mm. And I couldn't see him. He said, come on, you na ungelesha, na najuko kwa hii matatu. God said you have to get saved, so repeat this prayer after me. Wow. Say, dear Jesus, like that, like that, like that. That's and he, you, and you know, he did it in faith. He couldn't see me. Yeah, I couldn't And me was up you. there, in my heart, I'm saying it, that prayer in my heart. Wow. You know, when I was alighting, I gave him fair, fair young way I could be home, nili mpatia, nika shukamat. But that changed my, my mentality about those street preachers and those guys who you overlook, like, ah, wana taka tu pesa. Mm. I saw, ah, God uses those same, same guys who we see like that. So that was uh, the event of salvation. Wow. Just like that? Just like that. That's how I got saved. Wow. Then the process now begins. You know, there's the event, then now the process <laughs> now of deliverance. Mm -hmm. Because by the time I'm getting saved, I'm an alcoholic. I'm, as in, I was like, you know, I was really guilty. Mm. Because, like, I know God. I wasn't a stranger. Yeah. You know, I was like, I know God. Mm. Even when I opened the Bible, like, I know these words. Mm -hmm. I know all this. Mm -hmm. So now it's guilt and guilt. And uh, so what, what happened? It was a struggle because I had a, I had a friend who, because uh, you know it takes a lot of things to get, you don't just get saved. Mm. There was a guy who we used to talk with all the time, a very close friend. He was a partner, one of, we were three partners in the studio where we were. Mm -hmm. So one of, one of the partners was a close friend of mine. We used to sit with him and we used to talk about what was happening in our lives. And oh, look, we have lost direction, we have lost direction. Look, we are broke. By now we are this old, we should have this, we should have that. <laughs> So that's the guy we used to sit with mm. and share our testimonies. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. And when, I'm, when I t talk about sharing testimonies, I mean we're, in a, we're either in a bar or in a place where we are chewing those things people chew. You're, you're sharing testimonies in that environment? In that environment. Okay. And because uh, that's all we knew. Yeah. That's all we knew. So you're born again, but that's all you know. Mm. You know, you won't just jump into a church. You don't even know any church. Mm. 
So we'd sit there and we'd talk and be like, hey, God is good eh, all the time. You know, <laughs> and we're in that place and we're mm-hmm. chewing. Mm-hmm. And uh, as time went, um, we got to that point where, you know, even the Holy Spirit speaks. We reach a point where like, what are, what are we doing? Mm-hmm. Uh, then my friend was like, oh, there's a church where we can go. So we went to that church and that's how the, 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 the journey began. And uh, unfortunately, and funny enough, you know, I'd, I'd, I remember I'd told God before I got saved. Mm. Me before, when I get saved, because I've been saved before, mm. I remember I was telling God this when I was in the world. Mm. I was telling God, because there's always this thing of, um, this preacher was found with a scandal. Yeah. That preacher, an Ibanga Taith, one of Ananga Evi. There's always been that thing. It's always been there, I think. Mm. So when, we were, when I was getting saved, I was telling God, Mimi, Sitaki hizo stories za, za kuenda tu kanisa ya yote. Mm-hmm. Mi ndakuwa mkristu wa ukweli. Wa ukweli sasa. You know, <laughs> Nikuwa nime na jichocha. <laughs> like, hey, mimi. Mm-hmm. Siwezi kuwa fake kama watu tunaonanga kwa TV. Mm-hmm. And you know, God had that. So when I was getting saved, I went to a very small church. Mm-hmm. To a tiny church. Kwenye hakuna nafasi yata ya skando yote. Kas, church kandungu. Mm-hmm. Alafu unajua ni zile church roho wanatembea kutembea. <laughs> Ule mtu wako pale ni prophet, hey. anaongea kuongea. Service inaisha sa kumi. Hizo. Mm. And I'm telling you, I served and served wow. for, years, uh, for years. But anyway, that's another story. So, during this time, yeah. yes, you're testifying in such an environment, yeah. but it's like you haven't changed. Yeah. Yes, you're born again, but you haven't changed. Yeah. So, at what point did you change? The, the change had already begun. Mm. The change had begun because even when we are sitting in that environment, it wasn't like we were there for like a year. Mm-hmm. I'm talking about maybe a week or two weeks. Mm-hmm. We meet once in a while, we mm-hmm. talk, and then we eventually we're like, "What are we doing? Mm-hmm. We're wasting ourselves." Mm-hmm. And uh, when the minute we got into the, into that church, that particular church, onojo pale ni ni fire ina fire ni ina talka. You can't start now messing around. Mm-hmm. So that really helped us to become grounded. Okay. And then now we also got, got a different environment in which. Mm-hmm. We could, uh, we got a different environment in which to express ourselves in a place where we can sit, which is now more conducive mm-hmm. than that environment in which we are in. Because we were only there because we didn't know anything else. Yeah. Yeah. But now when we move to somewhere where there's, there's at least there's a better, more formal setting for for that kind of uh, talk, mm-hmm. it was a better place for us. Wow. Yeah, it was. Okay. And uh, so we were struggling, and then now there's um particular the particular situation if you look at it the key thing was that we were broke yeah we were broke so even when we are going uh, when we are getting saved and we are going to church you know god uses it any any situation mm-hmm. just to get your soul mm-hmm. so when we are getting into that uh, into that environment mm-hmm. most of the prayers we are praying even as even as so you're changing so you've reformed mm-hmm. but basically you're trusting god for money and, and let's be real, that's, that's normal. That's Even normal. now we are trusting God for money. Yeah. You know? So we are praying for money. And uh, God came through. After around a month, God mm. came through. <laughs> <laughs> and this is, this is a particularly important uh, event that happened. God came through and, and, and I got a small, small deal, small deal. Mm. He let something small just to, to wipe your tears. <laughs> and I, I went somewhere, I did a small job, I got some little money. And what's the first thing I did? I grabbed my friend and we went to the bar. <laughs> To celebrate. <laughs> and, hey, God has come through. Hey, let's go celebrate in the bar. Mm. <laughs> so hey, in the bar, we are talking about the goodness of God in the oh bar my gosh. and drinking. So to come here to Missouri, to come I remember it was I, I I got home that time. I'm still living in my mom's store. store room. Mm. Yeah, and I was getting home at 10 p.m. So I remember when I was I'm getting into the compound. Kumezi mo steama kila mtu melala. Then I was like, what's going on dinner? I was hungry. I got into my store. When I sat on that bed, I got hungry. Got really hungry. Ex- like, extraordinary hunger. Mm-hmm. I've never felt so hungry. To a point of desperation. I'm like, wow. I told God, wow, God, <laughs> do for me one thing. I know I made a mistake. Mm-hmm. But just do for me this one thing. If I can just get dinner. Star, 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 how I'll hold mm-hmm. it in my heart. I'll owe you. <laughs> that was as I was hungry. I was, hey, that was, hey, that was hunger. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I was like, hey, God, hey, me miss your escape. And you know, suddenly, Koko Nyumba, Stima Ziliwaka, my mom is born again. Mm-hmm. Ali, toka kwa Nyumba na Sahani ya Chakula. Wow. And mom, 
the way I know how when you were growing up, ni ule mtu ukiingia late ni makele ni fire. <laughs> ni makelele. Mm. But alito kana sahani hata kunisalimia. She gave me the plate of food. Cha. And she went back to the house to mazika zimo. Nikabaki na sahani ya chakula hivi. Oh my. And ile thankfulness ile naanza kuuma chakula. Mm. For the first time in my life I had the Holy Spirit speak to me. Mm. Akane mbele ufanya sio vizuri mm-hmm. and for me ilikuwa inaitwa epiphany where you're like mm-hmm. god is real wow god isn't some guy in heaven mm-hmm. he's real and he's there he's here with me mm-hmm. that is what changed my life the holy spirit that's who changed my life and from that day till this day i'm seated here miss je kunya pombe tena wow. sikuenda rehab mm-hmm. siku struggle at all oh, atini meteleza tinasikia ah hiyo ah. thirst ilienda kila mm-hmm. kitu Wow, he's satisfied mm. like that mm. like that because i think that maybe that's what i needed just to know that god is real yeah and that changed everything so all along you've been god is in heaven god, god is, is in heaven far away. and um it's sad because it didn't mean i wasn't a christian mm. and perhaps many christians do survive in the same way where mm-hmm. you know god is there and you serve him well and that's fine but i think god would, would want us to have that intimacy with him mm-hmm. because that is that was the key thing for me because you see for example a, a simple example i went to a church where there was a prophet and he would speak prophetic things yes. but i was a skept- i was skeptical i was like eh hey, oh, tu tunawajua ah <laughs> oh, tunawajua you know mm. but he would say something it would happen uh-huh. it god was breaking that thing in me that thing of believing like eh uh, like hakuna uh, anga hizi vitu and maybe perhaps maybe that's why like for example in onanga sana ushago mm-hmm. unaona ushago mm-hmm. there are people who ataenda kanisa mm-hmm. sande mm-hmm. alafu ende kwa mchawi yes. monday mm-hmm. because anaamini kanisa labda uende kutubu jumungu kwa mbinguni mm-hmm. but kama unataka powers kama unataka the real deal the real deal mm-hmm. eh, enda sasa kwa mchawi atakupatia tu powers mm-hmm. and it's important that, that that thing should break that you understand that real power comes from god yeah. god has mo, mo, those guys by the they, they, they just hack the system trying to tap into powers mm-hmm. which were created by god those powers they belong to god even the powers which are here to me as powers are they hack they hack it's a back door into the powers of god mm-hmm. you see ni vile sasa wanatumia sasa uchawi na 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 and satans because satan is the is the prince of the earth yeah so kuna venye tu things on the earth yeah. he controls yeah he knows yeah, he has authority yeah. over the earth but over so certain things yeah, and, exactly. and and his authority by there alinyanganywa alinyanganywa yeah, yeah exactly so it's just counterfeit mm. you know satan is this guy who comes hitting his chest like i have power i have this but mm-hmm. even the bible says in the last day tutaonyeshwa ndio huyu huyu ndio mtu alileta hiyo shida yote what does that mean that guy is a small he just just you, yeah, you get yeah. so even what he's using even those powers he has mm-hmm. see he was created by god mm-hmm. so there's nothing that he's using that he came up with yeah. that is his mm-hmm. he just knows a way a way of mm-hmm. of stealing to powers here deception. and there so deception and mm-hmm. that kind of thing so um that is that is that was important for me that was the key thing that changed my life wow. is realizing god is is true mm-hmm. i'd say magically true but but you you get the point yeah i get it's it. he's he's here he's true mm. he's there he's not like we are praying oh god ako hapa na anaangalia hivi ako na wewe and the funny thing is this ever since the more you seek him the more you see him wow yeah the way the bible says draw closer to me mm. and i'll draw closer to you mm-hmm. so the more you seek him the more you believe him like a fool mm. the more you see him yes but then <laughs> <laughs> um it's endurance mm. it's you'll be tested for your faith yeah and that's what satan looks for it's your mm. faith mm. like oh na mimi ni mungu umemuona eh sawa tutaona vile umemuona you know mm. so sometimes uh, satan will come as an angel of light he'll come masquerading as the holy spirit mm-hmm. and give you instructions that get you in trouble mm-hmm. and then you'll be like hey, who told you eh nani alikwambia unasikianga mungu yenye tunawajua you know then mm. suddenly you're like wow oh, i'm a god it's yeah that's but doubt that mm. doubt because that's what satan cultivates mm. that's his key thing actually if you real, if you look at satan's activity in, in the in the lives against the lives of christians the key thing is faith mm-hmm. it's not your your love or your hope no it's faith. Mm-hmm. faith faith do you believe oh you believe oh we'll see whether you believe that's the key thing yeah 
that means that it's mandatory, it's the key thing. Mm. Faith is actually the whole idea for salvation, it's faith, you believe. Not just that God is, because mm -hmm. Bible says even demons believe and they fear. Yes. So believing that God exists, that's just step one. That mm -hmm. is 101, faith 101 <laughs> is believing, oh God, you're there. Mm. Now real faith is now believing that this God who is there is your good shepherd now. Yes. He'll get you where you're, yep. where you're going. And actually it's, it's not as easy as, as it would look. Because let me give you a simple practical example. Mm. You could have, let's say, your business. You mm. have a business, you're running a business, right? Mm -hmm. And this business, let's say you're selling a product which is moving or something. Mm -hmm. And then one day, the Holy Spirit instructs you, I want you to go and buy certain products mm -hmm. and stock. Then you go, you buy those products, you're obedient, Christian. <laughs> you put those products in your shop, mm. isn't you? Then they stop, they don't move. They don't move at all. Mm. You see, no one, in fact, people are like, easy to attack, easy as, uh, to attack easy to burn, and get a lot of So the first question you ask, ni shetani ya mani wewe? God tells you it's me. Ni wewe, okay. Mm. Unanyama those, but at least I did the right thing. Mm. Unakawi kimocha. Hey, it was the end of the day, mungu, koshiwa ni wewe. It's how you stay. Mm. And you know that, that one week, two weeks, God will take you through something mm. that is not easy to go through. Mm -hmm. You will struggle. You will struggle, even seriously. Mm -hmm. But if you're faithful, because the Bible says if you endure till the very end, if you don't lose faith, faith yeah. then you will see God. Because yes. when God comes through, you know, there's a, we used to be taught, I remember, in church, there's a difference between being a hustler and being a man of God. Mm -hmm. They're two different things. Mm -hmm. um, we used to be taught this, and I used to look, I'm like, yeah, hey, our pastor, hey, we are not creative. <laughs> but I slowly came to understand. Because mm -hmm. you know what the guy was preaching? He was saying that me, Mr. Kiku, hustle kwa my shangu, apana, wacha ni hustle kwa magoti, na maundi. Hey. I'm like, hey, hey spiritual, hey, deep. deep. <laughs> That's deep. <laughs> That's deep. But you know, it's practically, a, it's a thing. It is, yeah. It's a thing because God is not fair. Mm -hmm. Do you know God is not fair? Okay, teach me. <laughs> he is what God normally does mm. when you're trusting in him. Mm. God can go and take, um, even the Bible says, he'll give you the riches of the heathen. Yes. So you can be uku, you're just on your knees praying for even five years, mm -hmm. nothing is happening. Mm. Barren kabisa. And someone ame hustle, ame tubu, ame nambali sana. Mm -hmm. And then one afternoon you're walking down the street, you meet a guy in a kuwanini kulikuwa na deal. Zile vitu uli stock, e uko nazo, e nataka kuzibaye, I'll triple the price, I'll do. Someone will Just bring like that. pop, mm -hmm. like magic, mm -hmm. and uh, you'll suddenly shoot up. Yes. And this is something I can tell you practically. You may not obviously make it overnight, mm -hmm. but when God starts coming through for you, what ones are kukuliza, wait, wait, okay, who is your Godfather? I'm a good <laughs> you know. How did you get here? Mm -hmm. This thing, we have seen it for years, we have tried. No one gets through past this place, mm -hmm. and you'll go past it. And uh, it reminds me of what Jesus said when, when his disciples told him, Jesus, increase our faith. They told him, Master, increase our faith. Mm. And he told them what? If you had faith like a mustard seed, seed uh, you'd, you know that, that thing. Yeah? Yeah. There's a place where he, he was saying that it's like the way the mustard seed grows. You see how small it is? Tiny. Mm. It's tiny, right? Mm. But imagine what is inside. Imagine the, or the genetic has. code or something yeah. inside that small seed. Because mm. it starts growing. And something like a bean or maize, you'll, pl you'll put a mustard seed here in maize. Maize utaipanda, maindi itaenda ju. Na wiki, wiki kadha itakuwa ju kabisi mekua kubwa, mm. hii hata ijajaminate. Mm. Lakini yu maindi itaenda, na ingine itapando, na hizo zinaenda. Haka kanamea tu, kanamea tu, you'll go one year, two years, kanamea tu, three, ten years, thirty years utarudi bado inamea. Mm. That is faith. Wow. You never stop growing. That's true. You never stop growing. I love how you're talking. Because uh, from what you said, at yeah. that lowest point that you hit, yeah. I can imagine even some some things like defeat, like yeah. helplessness, those would be the things that you think about every day. Yeah. But look at you now. Wow. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm so sorry uh, to cut you short in the interest of time. Okay. Uh, would you have any words of advice for someone who's experiencing maybe that phase that you said, uh, you, you drank, you did everything, and then you found that encounter with God that changed your life. Do you have any words of advice as you're parting short? Mm, 
what's important is being real with yourself. That is 100%. The key thing, be real with yourself. Because uh, for you to come from that situation of this is all I know, mm -hmm. and to admit that, this may be all I know, but it I mean this is what is best for me. Yes. That takes for you, you have to be really courageous. Mm -hmm. Courageous. You know, fear of the unknown keeps people imprisoned in, in a certain state. Because mm -hmm. if I had remained there, Sinika kwa tu bado tu hapo tu nimekaa na kula tu hizo matawi nikisema hii maisha inakuanga ngumu but when god gives you that door when god opens a door for you and tells you this is your escape unaona hapa this is your escape take the door shut everything behind you say i stakufa mimi sindika miaka miaka hizo zote sijai kunywa pombe ama live na sijai tafuna ama live na i i did lose friends it's not easy. Mm -hmm. It's like um, like anything, like if you want to grow your muscles, you have to go through that pain of Ulienda Jimu Kaumia, Ukapaka Ile Deep Heat. You have to go through some pain. Mm -hmm. But once Upone Yonkono Ipone. That's it. You see, so that so so don't also be afraid of, of uh, don't be afraid of the pain. Mm -hmm. It's a little pain or a lot of pain, but it will pass. It will pass. Mm -hmm. And you'll come out over there with something that you can hold on to and say this. This is my heritage. Mm. This is I'm not ashamed right now of how far I've come. I'm not ashamed of my life. I'm not ashamed of what I've achieved. Mm -hmm. You may achieve it the right way. Mm. The right way. Wow. Yeah. Yours is a story similar to In fact, you yourself said it. It's a story like Job's. Yeah. You lost a lot. You yeah. lost everything actually. Yeah. And now God just tripled, doubled, you yeah. know, quadrupled everything in your life. Yeah. And I, we really thank God for this far that he's brought you and the journey that is still yeah. underway. Um, yeah. Where can we find you? Look into uh, my Audio Kusini. Like audio, audio, Kama Sauti. And Kusini is South, Kiswahili. Audio Kusini, that is the name of the website. It's the name of the, of the studio. And we have a website, audiokusini.com. I'm Cactus Kusini, K-A-K-T-U-S. Cactus kama ile mti amiba, but with a K-A-K instead of a C-A-C. It's K-A-K-T-U-S. Kusini, same. Cactus Kusini. My story and everything is on the website. And on any social media handle, anyway, even, even if you Google, you'll find Audio Kusini, you'll find Cactus Kusini. We are there. We are on IG, Facebook, Twitter. We are all over. Wow. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. That's a legacy in itself. Just the big tip of the iceberg beginning. <laughs> Amen. Uh, so yeah. Amen. Thank you once again for joining us. I really, us really appreciate what you're doing. I, I, you're doing a good job here. Thank you. I appreciate it. We thank the Lord. Yeah. And thank you also, viewers, for staying with us until now. This has been Audio Cusini slash Cactus Cusini slash uh, Audio um, Producer slash uh, what is it? A studio owner slash architect i mean there's so much potential in that mustard seed that we sow every single day so keep the faith and keep encouraged that god is not done with you yet this has been the conquerors show on wema tv i'm your host laura lepore and in the comment section let us know what part of his testimony impacted you the most and we'll be very glad to see the potential and the impact that we're having out there even as we continue in this journey of faith till next time keep it wema tv